I want to discuss with you who I am, what I want to do, and how my vision of the future differs from that of Senator Cindy Hyde Smith. The crowd at this drive-in rally in Jackson, Mississippi, is here hoping Mike Espy might be the first black senator from the state since Reconstruction. Oh, I remember Jim Crow. I remember integrating my high school, Yes, the City High School. Every day I was called the N-word, so much that I thought it was my middle name. Today, uh, I brought my four-year-old out. It's worth it. Uh, it's worth making sure that other folks get a chance uh, to see that there are some of us who are really excited about this candidacy, and the time is now for Mississippi. In 2018, Espy lost this very race to Republican Cindy Hyde-Smith in a special election. Thank you so much. This is just an unbelievable night. This is just weeks after she made jokes about a lynching in a viral video. At the time, she said she meant no ill will. Photos surfaced of her posing with Confederate memorabilia. So many black people still saw her win as a sign that the state was attached to its legacy of slavery. We need leaders who will denounce hate and violence in all of its many forms. Leaders who will work for unity. And for this race has become a referendum on Mississippi's past. I remember growing up in that visceral racism. How much do you think has changed? It is certainly not as bad as that which existed when, when I was coming up. In Mississippi, we have more black voters per capita than any state in the nation. So all they have to do is vote. Espy should be well positioned to get those votes. His family owned one of the state's first black printing presses and Mississippi's only black hospital. He became a lawyer, congressman, and Bill Clinton's secretary of agriculture. He's running as a moderate, focused on things like Medicaid expansion and jobs. And yet it's not clear white Mississippians will be comfortable with him. I found a firm to do the data study and they said, yes, you could win. You need to increase the black turnout by 3%, which is eminently doable. And you need to get four more percent white vote. And I said, OK, let's go. How is it possible to both be palatable to white moderates, but also generate enthusiasm among young black people? Well, they all want the same thing. Do they? Who doesn't want better job prospects? They all want that. African Americans, we don't want any more George Floyds or Ahmaud Arbery's or uh, Brianna, we don't want that. But there are a lot of whites, they know that they're responsible for making it change. No justice! No peace! No racism! Police! Some of those changes have already arrived in Mississippi. George Floyd's killing inspired historic marches through Jackson. And after years of demands, the state finally removed the Confederate emblem from its flag. Black, black, black. Senator Hyde Smith didn't participate. Espy joined in. No young people here in Mississippi, not even just black young people, but white, brown, are almost like desensitized to the excitement of a new leader just because it seems like every time we get somebody new or we get somebody progressive or radical, it seems like things are going to change. It doesn't. 18 year old Macy Brown helped organize this summer's protests. Do you think SB really has credibility with people your age? Because he is pretty moderate. He's not out here saying, abolish the police. For a lot of us, we see somebody who's black, who stood with us on this issue of Black Lives Matter, and who was not Cindy Hyde Smith, and we're like, OK, this is enough. I think that we understand she would never entertain the conversation of Black Lives Matter. She would never entertain the conversation of defunding the police. A September poll showed Espy's now one point away from Hyde Smith. But this isn't a standalone runoff. It's a presidential election that will get every last Trump-supporting Republican to the polls. And it worries some of SB's white supporters, like Matt Dreffin. Do you think most white Mississippians are ready to have a frank conversation about race? No. <laughs> uh, I say that because do you think most white people in the country are? And I think the answer is no. What's your best bet about what's going to happen? If you were like, here's $1,000, you have to bet it, and you win $10 million, uh, I would bet on her. I think with a number of votes that I've been excited for, it's been wholly so soul-crushing to have it voted down. Just 
to feel like you're a salmon swimming upstream while someone like keeps smacking you back down. Senator Hyde-Smith is making the same bet. She declined repeated requests for interviews, but told NBC News that she was open to conversations on all topics and that, quote, Mike Espy has tried his absolute best to make this campaign about race. She thinks Mississippians are more focused on pocketbook issues. At the rally, people told us they're voting on both. If Senator Hyde Smith wins again, what do you think that will say about Mississippi? We changed our flag, but we haven't changed our politics. I grew up in a family that was very Republican. What do you think of Cindy Hyde Smith's leadership in Mississippi over the last couple of years? I think that she has just been a stamp for Trump. I mean, just pushing item for item his agenda. I mean, Mississippi ranks last in almost everything, education and health. And why would we keep doing the same thing? <laughs> I mean, when it obviously isn't working. So we're looking at a few hundred people um, out here just willing to sit in their cars for a couple hours to show their support for my guests. We're ready right now to build the broadest, deepest, widest coalition of voters in the state. Hyde Smith's campaign has been pretty quiet. How do you read her campaign strategy right now? She dismissed us and said that we're just a lot of noise. And to that, I'll say you heard through you. If you hear noise that's coming from behind you, you might as well just turn around, because it might just be an oncoming train. Hey, 